everyone, it's just me, LTM. I thought we might do something a little bit different today. Uh, it is relating to yarn, so those viewer yarn people, this one's for you. If you're not, you might not want to watch this video. Do you have any UFOs? I'm sure you know what I mean. If you're a crafter, you will know what a UFO is. Many of my crafting friends have multiple UFOs at any one time. I don't think I know any crafters that only ever work on one project at a time. We're gluttons for punishment really, aren't we? And sometimes you're working on a project, you get to a certain point and you either get stuck or you get fed up with it for some reason, like maybe the yarn is really annoying you. And so the project goes in the naughty corner for a while. And maybe you have a couple of projects that are in the naughty corner for a little while. And so we end up with these UFOs, unfinished objects or whips, works in progress. So I'm going to share with you today my UFOs, my works in progress. And this is going to benefit me, I hope, just as much as you might find it interesting because by resurfacing my UFOs, I'm hoping that I will be inspired to actually finish one or maybe two of them in the very near future instead of them hiding away in a bag somewhere. So by bringing them to light, I will hopefully get re-inspired to finish them. I hope you find this interesting and maybe you might be inspired to finish some of your UFOs too. The first project I'm going to show you is the project for which I'm using this gorgeous yarn. You would have seen me unbox this yarn from Hobby recently. I had originally bought two balls of this yarn for this project and because it's um, a colour gradient, the colour gradients weren't working out too well for me so I decided to buy a third ball of yarn. This project has been through a few permuta permutations. I have frogged decent amounts of it twice. Um, so it's not very progressed at the moment because I was waiting for this ball of yarn to arrive, which it now has. So now I'm able to continue working on this particular project. So what is this project I hear you ask? So here is how this project looks at the moment. This is the bodice. Uh, together with the sleeves and you can see the gradients of colour on the sleeves. These are called bell sleeves. I think they're really pretty um, and they have little picots on the end. You can see the little pico just here on the end. So that's the um, bodice part and then we have the other sleeve over here. So the bodice part is pretty much finished. Over here we have the hood, which I've only just recently finished remaking for the third time. The hood is very simply a rectangle, which you then fold in half to form a hood. You only sew up one seam before you attach it to the bodice. So folding it over. Would so this seam will be the back seam of the hood. These parts here will attach to the uh, neck, I guess, of the jacket of the bodice, and this part is the opening where my, I will look out from the hood. So I've made the hood slightly bigger than the pattern recommends because I just didn't think it was big enough, and I really have a big dislike for hoods that aren't big enough. I hate little hoods, they're just annoying. You may as well not even have one. So this is the pattern that I'm following. This is the Fairy Queen coat pattern. Um, so where I'm up to is that thicker band around the waist, that's the waistband, and then the pineapples 
um, that's called the pineapple pattern for the rest of the skirt to finish off the skirt. So that's my Fairy Queen coat project which has been on hold whilst I awaited the arrival of more yarn which has now arrived so I can now start working on this. Since the yarn arrived I have remade this hood and now that that's finished it's on to creating the skirt part of the jacket. Moving on to my next uh, working project or unfinished object. <laughs> UFOs? We've all got lots of UFOs, haven't we? Um, I recently found this cheap, this acrylic yarn cheap in the reject shop. Um, I guess for Americans that might be similar to a dollar store, perhaps. Um, so it's cheap, it's acrylic. I, what attracted my attention was these beautiful gradient mauves and purples. Purple being a colour that I am, um, I can't resist, really. Um, to go with it I bought um, some navy as you can see there they had this really lovely black and greys gradient as well so I bought some light greys and blacks to go with that and they really kind of do all go together reasonably well so and this is what I have started making with this yarn it is just a granny square that is simply double crochets all the way around Thank you to my friends for recommendations for this because I did start making traditional granny square but I am making these to be um, blankets for the homeless and the needy and I just figured with a typical granny square with the usual holes that are you know in between the shells that you make that it wouldn't be as warm as it could be. And we're in autumn here in Australia moving into winter so this is the time for this kind of project in my country if you're from the northern hemisphere you'll be moving into summer and blankets will be the furthest thing from your mind um, but here this is the time to do these kinds of projects this is coming out more blue in the camera than it is in real life they really are um, purples and mauves deep purples and yeah those kinds of colors so that's work in progress number two is blanket i don't know how much yarn a blanket usually takes i haven't looked that up that might be enough for just one blanket or maybe two blankets i don't know um but yeah this is just a project i can do and not have to think about so really simple one to just pull out and do whenever i just want to do something with my hands and not have to Look at the pattern all the time and think about it really heavily. So work in progress number two is blanket for the needy. My next work in progress involves these four containers with gradients. Hmm, kind of seeing a pattern here. This is the second project involving gradients and the acrylic also has kind of gradients hmm I hadn't noticed that myself until just now anyway so this project is more than 12 months old so it's like 15 months old now and I haven't worked on it for 12 months it's a temperature project now most people will do a temperature blanket and that might be what mine turns out to be I'm not too sure or it might just end up being four separate projects, one for each season. And you can see on the left, the uh, red gradients is almost used up and that, um, that season is completed. So that is for the summer, not the summer we have just finished in Australia, but summer the year prior. So the summer from 2020 to 2021. Uh, and you can see in the brown gradients on the right hand side, there is a reasonable amount done there as well. So it looks like from this sheet of paper that I very cleverly left with the project. I'm a bit surprised at myself as being that organized. You can see that it looks like I did through until the 30th of March, the temperature for the 31st of March 
first of April, 2nd April are recorded, but they're not crossed out, meaning I had not yet made those rows on the project. So that means it's more than 12 months because it's still the first week of April. But it's 12 months, obviously, since I worked on this project. And here is what the summer portion of this project looks like. So I can't remember which end is the starting end. Potentially this end, maybe, I'm not too sure. Um, so yeah. Uh, if you've ever looked at temperature projects, temperature blankets and things, you'll realise that what you need to do is work out what is the temperature range. And for my US friends, please remember that these temperatures are in Celsius, not in Fahrenheit. So you have to work out what is the range of temperatures through the season or through the whole year, and then work out how many different balls of yarn, different colours of yarn you have and therefore work out how, what's the range of temperatures for each particular colour going to be and that's what this yellow post-it note here is showing for the season of autumn. And here is what this autumn one looks at when it is laid out. So it's the lighter colours are more likely to be the lower temperatures and the darker colours to be the higher temperatures. So this was undoubtedly the beginning of autumn and going through to the deeper part of autumn. So for these, I hadn't decided at the time that I was still working on these, I hadn't yet decided whether I was going to maybe use them as individual scarves so have a different scarf for each season in the different colorways the um, greeny green ones are for spring and winter was going to be my favorite color purple um, yeah so I hadn't decided how I would finish the project I could either use them as four individual scarves or I could sew them together to make a blanket another possibility so yeah so that's my next unfinished project is the temperature project have you got a temperature project that you never finished it's be hard to have a project goes for a whole year isn't it and you've got to do something all the time this next project is an ongoing thing that I can pick up and put down whenever I want to it is making flannels or I don't know what else you might call them washcloths washcloths I guess we would call them a flannel in Australia uh, washcloths and accompanying face scrubbies or body body washes I guess so these two up the top here are made with a bamboo cotton mix which feels beautiful and has a really lovely luster to it however it is a rotten thing to use it splits like crazy and it's very frustrating to use so I'm still making this same pattern just not in that particular yarn I'm using 100% cotton these days instead I had a lot of this bamboo yarn by Motivira to use up and uh, I made a bunch of these for my family at Christmas time and now, then I made others just to use up the yarn that I had because I don't want to have that yarn anymore. Um, for a bit more of a neutral um, pattern if you like I looked for and found this pattern so this is just uh, textured this is in the 100% cotton I really like it uh, a same a similar one but I did a two-tone one and then face scrubbies to go with them so here's a face scrubby in the grey and blue which matches with that one obviously uh, I have some plain blue ones and I've been really just messing around with these. I did start initially following a pattern, there's another grey one. Um, so it uses the bobbles which are from this pattern. So this heart shape is made with bobbles and the face scrubbies have bobbles on them as well to make that kind of little pattern. 
um, and I decided to add on the back which wasn't on the pattern that I was following this little band so that you can put your fingers underneath there when you're using it so you don't drop it and a, an acquaintance commented that she uses these not my ones but ones that she's purchased elsewhere in the shower and she said oh gosh that band is such a great idea because I'm forever dropping these when I'm using them in the shower so then I started to decide to make larger ones of these again with the band across the back that one's got a different band it only goes across part of it so you could use that in the shower instead of a flannel so yeah so the larger ones of these are meant as body washes that you use in the shower to wash your body with or in the bath i guess and the smaller ones are meant for use on your face for example if you're cleansing your face or removing makeup and that kind of thing and these are all made with 100 percent cotton so you can put them in the washing machine on the highest temperature setting and they will be absolutely fine you'll be able to clean them get all the grime and dirt and stuff off them so I continue to make these when if you watched my most recent hobby unboxing I bought a whole lot more of cotton 100% cotton from hobby and this is primarily what those cottons are to be used for is to make flannels or um, washes cloth, washcloths and matching scrubbies to go with them so that is my next unfinished project it's it's not really an unfinished project it's just kind of an ongoing project i don't have any unfinished ones of these just at the moment and i think this is the last of my ufos my unfinished projects works in progress whatever you want to call them this is a small blanket that I was making as part of a knit along often abbreviated to KAL knit along where a different part of the pattern is released each week and so in the preceding week you need to finish a certain amount of knitting if you're going to keep up with the uh, with the project um, so this was a knitting project I think everything else that I'm working on at the moment is crochet this was a knit along knitting project done on circular needles for a small blanket and it was to learn different stitch patterns just using knit and purl so it was aimed primarily at beginner knitters um, so each band is um, divided starts off with this section and then this I think was a, a simple moss stitch another banded section and then this is an actual moss stitch uh, another banded section uh, this I think was called broken rib it's a bit hard to see the pattern because of the variegated yarns and this is used with two strands of yarn being used at the same time uh, one of my motivations for this project was to use up a lot of acrylic yarn that I had that I knew I wasn't going to make into anything for myself or for my family um, so it was just an opportunity to learn some new knitting stitches and use up some yarn I wasn't going to use for anything else uh, then we have another band and then this this section I think is really fun and I'm pretty sure this was called Sailor's Boggle and that's a really fun pattern I really like how that looks with all the little bobbly things uh, then another band and the last section oops, sorry the last section was popcorn stitch and I absolutely hated doing popcorns I did not like this at all it was really difficult and hard for me it hurt my hands I was really struggling with it so instead of doing the, um, the required amount of this I can't remember whether that's maybe 10 centimeters 15 centimeters I don't know um, I just did the one row and then I started doing the the finishing kind of band but as you can see this is still on the needles and has not been completed doesn't look like I need to do very much oh actually that's a um, 
it's not a completion band that is a striped so that's striped rose if you like um, so not a lot to do to finish this there is this much of the grey yarn left um, so that could be something else that I just do one of these completion kind of bands on to finish and then that project will be finished so I can't remember when when we were doing this I think that would have been during 2020 or possibly no possibly even 2019 I think it was before COVID hit so potentially this was a 2019 project that is still incomplete so there you have it this last working project is a knit along small blanket to learn interesting knit patterns you can create just using knit and pearl knitting stitches so there you have it they are all of the they seem to be all of the works in progress that I currently have um, couldn't find any more I just did have a bit of a rummage around in my craft room and I couldn't find any more so I think that's all the works in progress I have at the moment how many works in progress do you have how many UFOs do you have I find it hard to just work on one project at a time are you one of those really great people who can do just one project work on it finish it before you start another one I just can't seem to do that to myself so thanks for watching I hope you've enjoyed this Maybe it's inspired you to get to work on some of your works in progress and get them finished. I don't really kind of like having those unfinished projects hanging around. So it certainly has motivated me to get on and do some work on some of those. So I hope it's given you some motivation too. That's it for now. See you next time.